This video is sponsored by Qualcomm Technologies, Inc. There's been a lot of interest in ARM-based processors being used in laptops lately. And it's got a lot of people wondering, myself included, how is Windows on ARM architecture coming along? Now, without getting into the technical weeds, ARM is an architecture for processors that is just different from the x86 architecture that most computer processors are built on. In oversimplification, changing the system from one to the other and vice versa would require changing all of the programs and the operating systems way that they deliver instructions to the chipsets. This journey of Windows on ARM architecture actually began back in October of 2012 with the launch of Windows RT 8, released alongside Windows 8. It launched with support only for digitally signed ARM apps from the Microsoft Windows Store and didn't really offer any benefits in terms of battery life or performance and was frankly very quickly considered a flop as due to poor sales, all of the launch manufacturers, including Microsoft themselves, phased out all of the RT products. Fast forward to now, an ARM architecture is generally considered to be better at performance per watt and Lely has even started to compete and in some cases beat x86 systems in terms of sheer performance. Last year, the fastest supercomputer was an ARM architecture based computer even. More on all of that in my video on what ARM is at the link below if you're curious. Now Qualcomm, makers of the popular Snapdragon series of mobile ARM based chipsets that are powering almost all of the flagship Android phones that you've seen, launched their first ARM based chipset for Windows in 2017 with the Snapdragon 835. The computer platform series then got a new name change in 2019 and became the 7C and the 7C Plus, as well as the 8C and the 8CX. Now though, Qualcomm has just recently launched their Snapdragon 8CX Gen 3 compute platform. It happens to be the world's first five nanometer PC platform and has new prime performance core that makes it 85% better performance wise and 60% greater performance per watt over competing x86 platforms. And looking at reviews of some of the computers that have launched with the new chipset, it seems so far, a lot of people have plenty of good things to say about it. So here we have two such devices, both running the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8CX Gen 3, the Lenovo ThinkPad X13S, and the Microsoft Surface Pro 9 with its Microsoft branded version of the Snapdragon 8CX Gen 3 called the Microsoft SQ3. So let's see what's new, starting with the app compatibility. Firstly, unlike Windows RT, all of these ARM-based PCs can run any app you want, not just the ones from the Microsoft Store. But a big change that happened recently is that now Windows 11 fully supports x86 emulation on ARM architecture-based devices. So even if the program you want to use doesn't come in an ARM architecture-based version, you can install it anyway, and it runs just fine. Now it's been a feature for quite a bit, but in case you didn't know, you can actually run Android apps inside of Windows 11 now by using the Amazon App Store. And of course, it runs fine on Windows on ARM architecture. And lastly, Microsoft launched an app assurance program for their enterprise customers to be able to check if their custom apps and the like will run well on Windows on ARM architecture based systems like these. So that should help those customers feel more at ease when deciding if they can switch over or not. Next performance. So as mentioned, the new Qualcomm Snapdragon 8CX Gen 3 has a whopping 85% improvement over Gen 2. And well, you can tell. Running Edge, Office, normal productivity tools that I like to use, and even Photoshop and Lightroom, which are all now compiled for ARM architecture-based systems, work fine without any hiccups. But something interesting I thought is that we're now starting to see more and more AI-based improvements thanks to these ARM architecture-based chipsets like the Snapdragon 8CX Gen 3. For example, using Qualcomm's echo cancellation and noise suppression technology, devices can actually use AI algorithms to remove unwanted sounds from video calls. So you could be heard clearly, even if you're in a not so quiet environment. But you can also use AI features to enable HDR video, which just has more contrast and more vibrant colors. And you can turn on auto framing to use AI for facial recognition and automatically keep you in the center of the camera, even as you move around. Kind of clever. 
It's even to the point where they can remove barking, sirens, and other loud, spontaneous sounds, which is kind of crazy when you think about it, as it has to like recognize that it's an unwanted sound and then block it within milliseconds so that it doesn't get heard by the mic. I have turned it off, so you should be able to hear me in my chips that I'm gonna have for lunch, the water, you should be able to hear it, it should be really, really loud. Now, let's turn it back off. Now that it's So it feels like any other Windows computer, but also adds some AI features that x86 architecture based Windows PCs don't in the form of AI based video enhancements, for example. But next we need to talk about battery life. After taking two six hour flights back to back to be able to get to the Qualcomm Snapdragon Summit here on Maui, I was using the Lenovo ThinkPad X13S to write scripts and do research basically the entire time on both flights, and I still have plenty of battery left over. Which when you consider how small of a battery this laptop actually has in it, like Lenovo definitely prioritized portability and like lightness over putting in a larger battery. It only has a 49.5 watt hour battery in it. That's pretty impressive. And battery life is sort of the other party piece that these ARM architecture based PCs have besides all the AI enhancements that we've already talked about. So while we're here at Qualcomm's Snapdragon Summit, where they usually launch their latest chipsets and talk about what they're doing over the next year, what are they saying about the future of Windows on ARM architecture? Well, firstly, Adobe came out to announce their continued support for Windows on ARM architecture, and they announced that two more of their apps will be made native for Windows on ARM architecture shortly. Starting with Adobe Fresco and Adobe Acrobat in 2023. They also mentioned they'll be optimizing Adobe Sensei, their AI toolset for ARM architecture based PCs, which means that things like content aware fill, color match, and all the other tools that use AI in their creative suite will be able to use the AI Hexagon 8CX cores on the 8CX chipset to do things more efficiently and faster. And then at the end of the keynote, Gerard Williams came out with an announcement. Now, if you're not familiar, Williams was an Apple employee that was the chief architect at Apple for nine years for all of their central processors and systems on a chip, and then co-founded a company called Nuvia to make server processors, which was then bought by Qualcomm in 2021, and he's now the SVP of engineering here at Qualcomm. At the Snapdragon Summit, he finally revealed the name for the now in-house developed CPU cores that Qualcomm will be releasing in 2023. Qualcomm Orion is the first part of this journey and the best-in-class CPU will revolutionize the industry with fast, powerful, and efficient performance for a new era of premium-tier Windows PCs. Now, these are directly meant to compete with Apple's new M-series chipsets, according to Qualcomm. So, while at the moment these laptops are aimed more at portability and productivity, whatever the new chipsets are that will use these new cores in the future will most likely be a lot more powerful and might push the ARM architecture chipsets for PCs into the higher performing categories. There you go, the current state of Windows on ARM architecture. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always appreciate hearing from you guys. Also shout out again to Qualcomm for helping me make this video. If you wanna see what they're doing to further Windows on ARM architecture, check out the link below. All right, I think I'm done here and it's, it's time to get a Mai Tai. Running Microsoft's branded What is that? It's like a pump just started right outside the studio. What? I don't think it's gonna stop. Cool, filming's done for the day. <laughs> oh, nope. <laughs> Sounded like it was gonna stop and then it didn't. Uh. You can also... Plane? Plane. Even on a tropical island. It's not even surprising anymore, really. It's just a part of my day.
But there you go, guys, the current state of Windows on ARM architecture computers. My friend here is recording his A-roll while I'm trying to record mine. <laughs>